Thanks for staying with us. Kemak Onye Uchea is a social engineer, abuse recovery specialist, a certified child care professional by the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services, United States. Now you can join the conversation. Twitter us at Plus TV Africa or at We Show Africa One with the hashtag Ways, or you send us an SMS to 081 806 4663. Thanks for joining us, Kemak. It's my pleasure to be here. This I is know. really, really, I don't know how to where to even start from because know, right? I'm happy you've had some, a bit of experience in the US because I was reading some very alarming statistics, statistics. Yeah, that approximately five children die every day because of a child, of, because of child abuse. abuse. Yeah. Yeah. One out of three girls and one out of five boys will be sexually abused before they reach the 18, age of 18. 90% 18. of child sexual abuse victims know the perpetrators in some way. 68% are abused by family members. The list goes on and on. You know. So um, we had Ibidini earlier on talking about what, what is going on here in Nigeria. Globally, you are a psych child psychologist, right? Yes. You're a therapist. What would you say, you know, is the one thing that is the major effect, the toll it takes on a child after being abused? Okay, well, first off, um, the reason why, I think we need to go back to the reason why sexual abuse, child sexual abuse is actually wrong. Now, a lot of times people ask, okay, what's, what actually, why is, is it a wrong to have sex with a baby or a child? The, the, the issue is sex as a form of human interaction does not just involve the physical body or the gonads of the child. There are so many aspects of the individual that's involved in sexual activity. Your creativity is involved in, you know, intercourse, your physical strength, your, um, of course, part your body. Right. Spiritually, Everything. it's a soul tie. There are so many things. Now, in children, a lot of those parts responsible for sexual intimacy on a balanced level are not fully not mature. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason why. And it may shock you, in certain parts of the world, there's a lot of campaign right now to end the stigma or the crime that pedophilia represents. Yes. Because I, a lot of people are saying um, the, the need to engage in sexual intimacy is an innate human desire. And for you to stop someone that feels like doing this is actually a crime against their human rights. Wow. So there are so many of these things that are coming up. But then another thing you want to look at um, what goes on in the mind of a sexual predator. Yeah. Now, research in neuroscience has actually shown that more than just a sick attraction, a sick um, sexual attraction of an adult to a child, the parts of the brain that function in the process of um, child sexual abuse are the parts of the brain that function when an individual wants to ex exert power. So the issue, the psychology behind sexual abuse of any kind is a power play between a predator which is a normal human expression. Everyone wants to throw their weight. Everyone wants to express, even amongst the lower animals. Everyone wants a place where they are grand. So it's where, a power play. It's actually a power play. The ability or the power that I have over you, over this individual to express aspects of me that I want to have some form of, some form of pleasure from, mm -hmm. even at your own detriment. So these are the issues that um, go on when you look at um, child sexual abuse. Oh my wow. goodness. So, so <laughs> what do you, like, Science? how do you, okay. like when you have like sessions with children, like what, what do you, what, what do you do to help them recover? Like, okay, first of all, um, it's actually a blessing <laughs> for a child who, whose sexual abuse is exposed in childhood. And one thing you have to understand, for most of these children don't even understand what is happening to them. Mm -hmm. To some of them, they've been so conditioned to the see that, exactly, that, the, the, the grooming. Yeah. They've been so conditioned to see this thing happening as a normal thing. expression. And this is why, like she mentioned, children who are abused or children who have experienced sexual abuse, you find them playing out the things that have been done to them on other children. Ooh, because yeah. children learn by copying and yeah. repetition, yeah. right? So when you look at all those um, indices, it, the, these things come to play. And now to your question, the, the most horrible impact of child sexual abuse 
is the myriad emotional and mental problems that these children grow up with. Now, I tell people, it's a sad situation, where, but a lot of people believe that with counseling and you know therapy, you can, act, you can actually get over the effects of oh child sexual God. abuse. It's something you have to live with for the rest of your life, oh which God. is why we advocate, yes, to a very large extent. The issues of trust, the issues of you know, selflessness, you, the mm. issues that have to do with you. Um, you know, I don't know how to put it, in, in order not to sound so, you but know, gory no and horrible. Well. Exactly. And then people, you find that uh, people who experience sexual abuse in childhood tend not to take themselves too seriously or regard themselves as deserving of respect mm. and, you know, some form of love or, you know, just respect as a human being. Because as a child, if someone abuses you, uses you wrong, you just grow up subconsciously, always putting yourself in situations or finding yourself wow. attracted to situations that where you are abused. Right. So it's a total mind rework. It's a total social reengineering in the minds of these children, which is why we advocate prevention is the better. best way okay, so to now, handle. Okay, yeah. Well, I, I'm, I'm curious for children who don't open up. What are the signs as a parent or an aunt or a neighbor? What you are the signs look out to look out for? Excellent. I'm glad you asked that question. And in most of my trainings, I spend more time you know, talking to adults because to a large extent, children are not able to fairly articulate what goes on with them. Now, some of the signs you could um, look out for in a child that will let you know this child is possibly a victim of child sexual abuse. And before I go on, I need to warn these are symptoms it, we're walking on the assumption okay. so for some parents watching they might have observed so these traits don't just you know jump yeah. the gun or yeah. conclude you right. still have to ask questions and follow some you know right. subtle procedure for example a child of a certain age who suddenly becomes quick to cover up when undressed mm. That's a sure sign that something is going on mm. and then you also have children who suddenly make sexual innuendo uh, what? you know like for example a young a lady was talking to my partner and then she laughed and fell on the chair and then the, her little boy fell on top of her and began to make you know the sexual movement wow. things like that so it turned out that the child had bumped into the room and saw his parents engaging uh. so you know children are creatures of they learn by observation and repetition another sign you could look out for in children is for a child who was previously bubbly expressive all of a sudden quiet Good becoming wrong. introverted mm. and the reverse is the case for a child who was introverted now all of a sudden out. becoming very outspoken oh. and then we have other, so many uh, lots of um, Signs I could tell you a child has been sexually abused, for example, touching delicate body parts in themselves and in other children, making conversations, you know, with heavily um, invested sexual undertones, yeah. all so, of that. So if, if, if I hear you correctly, that child sexual abuse, you know, there's no limit to the effect that it will have oh, on, yeah. on the person, even when the person is grown. Certainly. And all of that. So how do you think would be the best approach? And I asked um, if you're doing the same question, but you are a, a psychologist and you, you, can, you can help us understand this better. What would you think we can start to do, you know, to help re, because this is, your mind has been programmed. We have to start to, to, to delist a lot of things, unlearn a lot of things, change a lot of things and all of that. Um, what can we do to help even the, the abusers and the victims, because they are all suffering, as far as I am concerned. What can we do? Right, now, um, Ibiduni said something that uh, it's quite true. Statistics have shown that most sexual abusers were abused themselves. However, I don't want to use that as a crutch. Mm -hmm. I belong to the school of thought that advocates severe punishment for sexual abusers. And of course, that's what the line that she is, yes, the government that's is what they do. Life imprisonment. Yes, yeah. so what I absolutely we agree love with that. on that. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so now to your question, what can we do to help people move on or at least get to a point where these issues do not have an overriding or overwhelming effect on okay, their right. ability to function right. as you know, balanced human beings? There's a popular saying that when life throws lemons at you, make, make lemonades. lemonades. 
Now, a great way to move beyond your experience of sexual abuse is to use your abuse to empower other people. Mm -hmm. Because in that sense, you are a first-hand survivor of sexual abuse. Now, when you take that experience and not let it, um, you know, not keep sulking, not, not let it, or not let it define your yes. life, yeah. and you go out there and begin to advocate for the safety and protection of children. And the truth is, for a lot of us in this space, this is our life experience. Mm -hmm. We're relieving the things that happen to us as children. Okay. But in this sense, we're choosing not to be held bound okay. by those negativities. Okay, we're awesome. using them as tools to empower parents. Because one thing I found, especially in Nigeria, mm -hmm. is this thing about denial. Lots of parents are in denial. Tell me about it's this. not my portion. It can happen to my child. Honey, the children that are sexually abused don't fall from the sky. <laughs> and the funny thing is, and let me also point out that the sexual abuse of a child is not really an indicator or an indication of parents who are not really watchful yes. over their children. No, it's not. But, you know, sometimes the idea that my child could have been abused is so heavy on the mind of the parents. They, can't they don't know how to handle it. So a lot of them run into self-delusion or yeah. denial, or even when children are trying to speak, they try to hush the children more for their own mental well-being. Yeah. Right. So parents need to understand it could happen to your child, it could happen to anyone, and it could happen right under your, your nose. nose. Oh dear. Oof. You could be the most watchful parent and still and your child somehow there'll abused. be a crack. Oh my so God. but I think the first thing we need to do is empower children with knowledge. Yes. My organization developed what we call the Child Body Police Course, where we empower children, help children understand that there are certain aspects, certain parts of your body that are private, and those parts no one should touch. Well, guess what, uh, Kanak? With all of these things happening in one minute, mm. what is sexual abuse? Because even we were saying that, even exposing them to pornography and all, so what is sexual abuse? Let's just wrap it up there. So any, any kind yeah. of introduction of sex or contents of sexuality to a child that is outside educational information, either by practical or physical engagement or by speaking, you can actually create an atmosphere that engenders sexual abuse by your words, by innuendos, like Ibiduni said, by movies and songs, music videos that you expose children to. Okay. That is sexual abuse. So it means that 98% of, of us. 99%? Yes. No, let me give us Music 2%. videos alone. 98% <laughs> of us were guilty. And, right. and for us to change this, we have to start from um, making it a deliberate effort. Exactly. Yes. Very deliberate about the kind of content that we expose our children to. There you to. go. Uh, thank, thank you so much. Thank wow. you so much, ladies. People should listen to their kids. That's the most important thing yeah. for me. Listen to mm. your children. Right. Listen to your kids. Do you have any final say, um, words, Sanzi? Um, uh, this has been a huge, I mean, I don't have kids, I have cousins, and I look out for them, but um, I just realized that, because there are a couple times that I see them watch a few adult content, I'm like, shut that TV, and I walk past, I don't really take it serious. But um, I feel so guilty, and I think a lot of people are in my shoes, and lesson not taken. I'm going so to if somebody is going through abuse right now, or the person has found out the child has been abused, what, I mean, what would you say to that person? Or? Okay, first of all, you need therapy. Understand you're not a bad parent, because that's that for the, the most guilt, part. That's yeah. The guilt, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, there's some things that may, some structures that may have been put in place that were not in place, but that doesn't necessarily make you bad. And I just want to quickly take up what she said about effective communication with your children. Don't hush your children. Mm -hmm. Engage your children. Allow them the liberty to ask you questions. Yeah. Because when things like that happen and you have open lines of communication, mm -hmm. your it children will come to them. you. Yeah. On right. that note, Thank you Fantastic. again so much for coming. It's my pleasure. We would continue to advocate, you know, and raise that awareness to parents. And we hope that any parent that is going through this right now would find help. So catch us live every weekend from Fridays to Sundays. <laughs> Another wrap for the weekend, yeah. yeah. <laughs> At 8 p.m. as we bring thought-provoking and engaging conversations, informative conversations to your screen. Now, in case you missed today's quote, here it is again. Abuse is never contained to a present moment. It lingers across the person's lifetime and have pervasive long ramifications. That's from Lauren Nillian. Do you agree with her? Oh, certainly. Yeah. Absolutely.
Mm. All right, so enjoy the rest of your evening.